Good morning. Welcome to Y254. This is Y in the Morning. This is actually Tuesday Entrepreneurship, and we have just had a wonderful interview from Mr. Barry, who was talking to a lady who helps ladies through, uh, who helps ladies get empowerment through soft skills. And right now, we've got another guest that we'd like to hear from, another entrepreneur. And she's not just an entrepreneur. She's actually a serial entrepreneur, and I'll explain to you exactly why we call her that. She goes by the name of Sarah Muni. And before we get to meet her, I'd like to tell you how you can reach us on our social media pages in case you get piqued or your interest gets piqued by anything that Sarah shares. The way you can do that is through our Facebook that is Y254 channel and on Twitter you can find us on Y254 channel as well and you can also find us on Instagram that is Y254 underscore channel. I'll be on joy underscore mochache and if you'd like to watch this interview later you can do that on YouTube and we also have a repeat on DSTV on channel 376 at around 2 p.m. Karibu Nisana. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you for having me, Joy. Oh, I'm yes. so happy to have you. Thank you. So, serial entrepreneur. Yes. In case people don't know what a serial entrepreneur is, it's basically someone who does, oh, an entrepreneur who runs several businesses all at once, as opposed to the typical entrepreneur who runs maybe just one business, one idea. And one of the things that you do, actually, not only that, you're a life coach. Yes. And on top of that, you're actually the founding director of Blue Diamond Consultants. We shall talk a little bit about yeah, that. Please. And your founder and principal of Change to Excellence Academy. Hey, my friend. Okay, we're not done. <laughs> She's also the national chairperson of Global Business Roundtable Future Leaders. And last but not least, she also programs director of women in Africa, Kenya, the chapter of a Pan-African organization that focuses on girl childs and women's empowerment. Do you have time to sleep and make friends? I have time. Do you have time for a life? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's my life. You see, that's my, my life. My God. Yes. Wow. It's just about how you manage your time. Uh -huh. Yes, to the, so that you know what you do when, what you're supposed to be doing when. Yeah. But actually, we have people who have uh, companies like 40 companies. They yes. have a group of companies. I mean, wow. 100 companies. I mean, sp sp I speak of somebody like um, this guy of Virgin Atlantic. Mm -hmm. of, I mean, mm. he has, yes, how many companies has he? Of oh, hundreds. hundreds Bill true. Gates, hundreds of companies yeah. so, and how do they manage so number one you have to be able to work with people be able to delegate be able mm -hmm. to empower people so that they can take responsibilities and so for you, you just take an oversight role okay. yes otherwise you can do all those things at the same time you cannot manage you, you cannot. do that through uh, investing in other people mm -hmm. who are able to take up those responsibility mm -hmm. and then you just go to just check checks and balances yeah. and then you can manage that so it's very possible it's very possible it's very possible oh my goodness and you you know you are also a youth and this is a youth channel and mm -hmm. I am hoping that someone is actually getting interested in opening a business because employment is not exactly the best thing right now mm -hmm. and let's talk about uh, first and foremost your blue diamond consultants yes what do they do exactly what do you people do what do you focus on doing so basically Blue Diamond Consultants is a, is a, is a capacity building um, company. Yes. What we do is that we offer trainings yeah. to organizations and to companies in mm -hmm. terms of change management, leadership, personal development, people skills, mm -hmm. um, team building, anything to build a team, sales and customer service, anything to build a team. Yeah. To, because the most important asset you have as a business are the people. The people. You okay. have your data. Yeah. You need the data very much. Like yeah. think of a bank. Yes. What do you think is the most important thing um, asset that they have? One is the data. You, yeah. you don't want to lose the data. Yeah. But also very important are the people. Because mm -hmm. if you empower the people, if the people have been, their capacity has been developed, mm -hmm. then they'll be able to take care of your data. They'll be able to take care of their customers and they'll be able to grow the business. So our tagline is actually build the people build the business build the people build, build the, the people business. build the business that's your tagline your yes. mission statement everything yes, yes, build the people tagline. build the business yes we build people we in business of building people yes because the people are the ones who build up businesses that run the country mm. then um th the people build the businesses which build the country yes. which build the continent that is so, true. So bottom line, we, we really need to have a conversation about people development. And I'm seeing uh, very many entrepreneurs and very many business people actually starting to invest in people in terms of even personal development. Because the better you are as a person, the better your, your business, mm. the better your career, mm. the better your, your work, mm. the better uh, y the environment around you, the better you are as a person. That's and true. that has to do with personal development. 
Mm. So if there is something that you can invest in today, mm. if you if you have a small business, you're just starting out, invest first of all in yourself. But mm. then also if you have some, you know, a small team like five people, ten people, invest in those people in terms of growing their mind, developing their mind, the way they think. And then they will even show you ideas that you, 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 you didn't even have that mm. will help you grow your business. So that's why we started the Blue Diamond Consulting um, consultant Company. Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That that does a lot. And I most of the things that you're doing and also according to what you've said, focus mm -hmm. on building people personal development as mm -hmm. well as building other people mm -hmm. and you've tapped on something because we're talking about entrepreneurship mm -hmm. um, you've tapped on something something I think even not every business person knows that what makes a business successful are the people yes the people yes you mean the staff the ones who have been hired to work right yes what impact do they tend to have on a business because um, I would think, oh, maybe the CEO, maybe the finance person has all, you know. But I would just think everyone else just comes to work, does their part. What exactly can you say to make people understand the importance of, the importance of um, building people so that the business succeeds, as you said? Oh, it is everything. Because let me tell you something. There's a term that's in, business, in the business world that people buy, organizations pay. Right. And the first thing that uh, people buy about you, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're employed somewhere, the first thing that people buy about you is you. So if you're coming, if for example, you're selling a product and you're coming to me, you're selling maybe it's insurance or whatever it is, and you're coming to me, I first of all want to believe you. See, are you believable? Can ah. I trust you? Mm -hmm. Do you look like the, the kind of confidence that you, that you showed? Th th is it believable? Right. before I come to your product. Right. So if I don't really trust you, if I don't quite believe you because of how you present yourself, how you look, then uh, it would be a bit difficult for me to come to your product, to come and buy your product. Mm. So that's why developing the people becomes very, it's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. It's, non it's that paramount. It is that paramount. It's okay. non-negotiable. Okay. It is people who build the businesses, and if you, and that's why it's very important. Uh, sometimes you just look at them. You know, I'm paying you your money. I'm paying. <laughs> you have a salary, so you work. Yeah. Yeah. But then it, it's more than that. And companies that you find are doing very well even today, the outstanding companies, because you're not a mono, uh, uh, what, what, do, what do you call them? These companies, that, yeah, you're not a monopoly. In, right. In, in any field that you are in, whether you're in telecom, like 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 this, whether you're in telecom or whatever area you are in, you're not a um, monopoly. Mm -hmm. There, you have competition. You have other people with the same um, products. So how exactly do you stand out? Mm. You stand out through empowering your staff, the people who are representing you. They are the face of your company and your products out there. Mm. You first of all empower them. Then from there, they are believable and people will come to your company. People will buy from you. You stand out by empowering your, cust your, your, your staff to, to be able to, to speak about your, your products uh, confidently and they grow your company. Right. Yeah. Last year, you did something um, actually at the Global Business Roundtable Summit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I would like for you to touch on what happened there uh, because we are once again talking business and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And then also, I'd like to maybe read some of the inspirational things I have seen okay. on your page. Oh, please, by all but means. Yes, but first of all, kindly, let's talk about the Global Business. Um, Roundtable mm -hmm. Summit. Yes, yeah, so actually we hosted, last year we hosted a Global Youth Summit, uh, which we, where we had about, uh, I think, over 10 um, countries. Wow. Young people, young, young people, youth. entrepreneurs, yes, mm. young people, entrepreneurs from different countries in Africa. And we were basically asking ourselves, do we have common challenges as countries? Do we have common solutions? And you see, one of the things that stands out in Africa when we're discussing youth, when we're speaking about youth, is unemployment. So what are some of the solutions that we have to problems that affect youth in Africa? Yes. And one of them we said is innovative entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yes, and we started looking, and we really um, you know, had a lot of insights. How can we innovate in education? How can we innovate in mining, in the mining industry? How can we innovate in telecoms? How can we innovate in all the sectors that make up an economy, in agriculture? Mm. All the sectors that mm. make up an economy, and you know, right now we are speaking about in, in the country, we're speaking about drought and um, I mean, yes. the, I, mm. um, food insecurity. Mm. How can we be? How can we, as young people, start innovative agricultural projects yeah. that will be able to feed, provide food security to our countries mm. and our societies? Mm. So we were having uh, the, such kind of conversation, and it was very, very clear that um, employment is good. Mm. We're not saying that it is bad. It is good because you go and get the experience, which is very good. But you know how America has been built? 
and all these countries, all these Japan, what it was not built by just employees. You're mm -hmm. working somewhere as an employee. It was built by people who thought innovatively, and That's they started true. all those companies. That is why you find there are so many opportunities out there because mm -hmm. there are very many innovative thinkers, entrepreneurs. They start entities. They have innovative ideas that bring um, bring people from all over the world to right. go to those countries. Yeah. And that is the same that we need in Africa mm -hmm. because we because this is what happens. Um, I don't get a job. I have I have a degree. I mean, like most people, and then you don't get a job, and of then you course, start saying, yeah. okay, well, I'll go and work in Qatar. Uh, if somebody did start a business in Qatar, or in Saudi, or in uh, US, or in Australia, where would you go? Yeah, exactly. And why can't we create the same opportunities here in Africa? Mm. So that's the conversation that we were having, and it was really very, um, it, it brought mm. out very, very liberating, very li liberated thoughts and discussions, which we need to continue to have as African youth. Yes. Actually, even last week, I just came from a conference in Rwanda, and we were discussing the same things. Uh -huh. Yes, how can we build, um, um, uh, you know, lasting, lasting uh, companies, lasting entrepreneurial entities, mm -hmm. you know, as youth? Because we are the future of the continent. Exactly. Yes. We, the trustees of any society, any nation, mm -hmm. is its youth. And that's why we need to have this, such kind of convers conversations as African youth. All right. Yes. Um, you know, you've said something, a lot of important things <laughs> in, in everything that you've said. And yeah. what I love is that you brought in the fact of uh, food insecurity mm. and also the fact that just recently we're hearing news of um, people literally lacking food mm -hmm. you've also brought in the fact that a lot of our people tend to leave the country to look for work yes, instead of instead of bringing in innovative mm. ideas and yes. starting innovative businesses so mm -hmm. that we don't have to keep leaving I love the work that you're doing and yeah. I have to ask uh, if I could read something you wrote here mm -hmm. that says dear entrepreneur this is a growth tip mm -hmm. and it says be slow to hire and quick to fire don't keep dead wood and don't rush hiring decisions. Now, the, why I'm reading this one, because we want to tie in the fact that people that work for corporations, mm -hmm. wherever it is, even the ones that people keep flying out of the country to go to, all those people that are working there that have been hired, mm -hmm. we don't necessarily, especially here in Kenya, we have a problem with what we call nepotism. There is a hiring pro. I don't know. Uh, many places don't even have hiring processes. There is yeah. a, a hiring <laughs> process, yes. A but hiring then, process is a person. Yes, and then the process is the person. It goes mm. in another way. Mm. And these are some of the things we need to work on because we're also putting wrong people, people who are unqualified, people who don't have the competence to do certain kinds of jobs. And then those who keep applying, the people who've studied certain things, are the ones who don't get the work and so they happen to leave the country mm -hmm. when you go out and you do your talks when you're encouraging people about innovative business and how to hire people maybe who are competent and mm -hmm. how to build those people to make that business become successful mm -hmm. what are some of the tips you would say especially to somebody who is starting a new company and is having a hard time trying to figure out what are the good qualities in which to hire a person yeah. Yes. Number one, you need to you hire skills. Skills. You hire a skill. Yeah. You see, you are employed for what you know, but you are paid for doing what you know. Wow. And w doing what you know requires a skill. That's true. So you're looking for a skill, mm -hmm. and that's why you know when you go for an interview, you, you, I mean, anywhere, I'm, I'm sure many people you, you've you've heard this. You'll be asked, uh, what, "What can you do?" Okay, papers aside, exactly. mm -hmm. you're doing well what on can paper. You do so first? papers aside, what can you do? Mm. And they are basically want to know what can you actually do? What what is it that you can? What skill do you have? Right. And that's why our education system has uh, th there needs to be a change. There needs to be a change so that we now start advocating for for skills based education. That is. Yeah. Because yes. I mean, when you come, most of, most of the graduates that usually are churning from these um, universities, you find. You can just do management. What are you managing? Mm -hmm. And you don't have any skill. You don't have any. What are you managing? Mm -hmm. So we need the skills, and that's why the TVET. I, I think I would uh, congratulate the government for really coming up with the TVETs, and so that young people can get skills. So that as you go out there, there's something that you can actually do. You can even start your own business, whether it is welding or whatever. But a skill. So as uh, if you're hiring somebody, you are hiring a, a skill. skill. You're hiring a you're skill. You're not hiring anything else. Forget. Mm -hmm 
we know each other forget yes. you know someone who knows some, forget that you're hiring the skill forget my trade or what i need somebody mm. who can actually work yes. and i don't have to be there because i'm very busy also looking for business out there i need somebody who can actually be in the office technical yeah. person handling the someone work. you can trust because yes. without that then actually the business can fall apart it falls apart and it falls apart on what tribal lines yeah. why should i be losing my business because it's i, I brought my brother mm. because i have to is i have to give the uh, for, as an entrepreneur you don't think like that as an entrepreneur, that is not the thinking. And if that's the thinking that, you know, I need to hire my uncle, I need to, you want to bring your whole village here so they see you're doing very well, very soon you'll be crumbling. That's very true. Yes, you need... And that's what's happening to African society. We're the, falling apart because yes. we're hiring people that don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. It's just about is my people, is my mm. person, is my what. It's, is that, I mean, that's how, that's how you bring down. That's how you bring down an economy. And exactly. that's why when you go out there, like you go to U.S., most people who want to go to U.S., Australia, Canada, whatever, they hire you for the skills and people who yes. give them the plumbing jobs they are paid very highly the, even drivers drivers bus drivers are paid highly live in wonderful apartments yes it's, but, it's but, <laughs> but now here i think we're just i think in the illusion that you know when you manage when you have a degree but manage business management and what now that science sounds nice you know right. it sounds mm -hmm. nice looks good on paper but mm -hmm. when it comes to actual the actual work the rubber meat road they're nowhere right yeah right. That we that we don't need that in africa that's why we really need to think innovatively mm -hmm. develop skills make sure you have a skill and sometimes we even have gifts as a young person there are three things that you have. You have dream. As a young person, you have dreams. You have an idea. You have a vision. This is what I want to see for myself. We all have that. Yes. Then the other thing you have is energy. Yeah. You have the energy and you have the time to actually pursue them. Yeah. Now, the combination of those three things will bring in the money. Wow. It will bring in the money. Could you repeat those three things? Yes. <laughs> Just in case someone is missing. Yes. Yeah, so number one, you have a dream. A dream. As a young people, we have uh, dreams. We have dreams. Mm -hmm. Two, you have the energy. Right. You have the energy. These are your haters. These are your premiers. Go for your dreams. Exactly. And then you actually have the time to actualize those dreams. Yes. You have the time. Yeah, because you're young, you yes. don't have a family. Maybe mm. you don't have children to tend after you, yes. you try to take care of. There's a lot of time on your hands. You have time. Yeah. So you, and then now you, when you have ca that coupled with will, you have the will to actually uh, just follow to the end. It will bring in the money. It will draw the money. Mm. And you will achieve your dreams. And you will become a resource to the society yes. and a resource to the world. Yes. And that is what we want to build in Kenya. That mm. is what we want to build in Africa. Mm. That's how, that's how those, those economies that we look up to have been built. Yes, yes. that's true. And I feel like, mm. Saramuyi, you don't get enough... Um, how can I say clout is not the right word you don't get enough recognition for what you're doing in my opinion because what you're doing is rather big and by the time people and that's why I've taken different angles because mm -hmm. I'd like for people to understand the importance of what you're doing and how it's going to actually impact this whole continent as a whole mm -hmm. if other people pick up on what you're doing mm -hmm. and also start to do the same thing in different countries that are suffering economically yes and also when it comes to um, employment this is what is going to help us yes and let's go back to talking about um, it actually, those, sorry, my directors are telling me that they're going to put up some photographs. Mm. As we wait for them to do that, mm. we shall continue to talk about innovative business. Mm -hmm. I'm really into this idea of innovative business. And um, a lot of the things in Kenya or in Africa, a lot mm. of the many markets are untapped. Just recently, yes. just recently, we never had... Um, what do you call them, life coaches and people who come, even motivational speakers, that was an untapped market. Yes. And once people realize the importance and how much our youth are actually dying for that word of encouragement, when people realize that is when people started tapping into the market and then mm -hmm. people realize the importance of it. Here you are, and I can see something there that says Embassy of the United States. Yes. <laughs> Please, tell us what you were doing there. Yes, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, so this one I was speaking about, uh, it was something I was doing with Change to Excellence Academy, yeah. because I have a personal development academy. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I was speaking about basically personal branding, how you present yourself. Yes. Yes, at American Space there, that's where you're seeing the Embassy of the United States, an American corner. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing the, 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 the Embassy of the United, United States, and it was basically empowering professionals and entrepreneurs about uh, being more keen on their outlook yes because as I was saying the first thing that people will buy about you is you so how do you present yourself in a way that yes. you are memorable yeah. yes mm. in, your, the, in a way that you're memorable so that's basically what I was doing there that's what you were teaching them there yes also what you were personal talking branding about. Okay. Yes. And now that we're talking about personal branding mm -hmm. and other, um, we're now walking into the other side of mm -hmm. Sarah Mooney, mm -hmm. which is a life coach. Yes. Let's now touch on that just a little bit. Yes. As a life coach, mm -hmm. I know that it takes. Oh. Oh my goodness. 
Yes. Oh yeah. So I was being awarded a certificate there by yeah. by this is our national chairperson for Global Business Roundtable, there's Sarah Karinge. There was this meeting, a personal branding mogul in uh, in in US. Okay. Yes, in Miami. She lives in Miami. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So they were they were, they, were, they had a meeting here. They had a meeting here in Nairobi. So I I mm -hmm. just met them at the Intercontinental. Yeah. Yes, that is and then, oh, too. that's one of my hobbies. I love that hiking. So um, oh, yeah, my what, and I was we can get along. Because <laughs> that, that's my scene. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, so I love this one. I, if I come from Kirinyara County, and one of the things I'm promoting there is tourism. So I just took um, time when and went one day into one of the falls there, near, very near um, Mount Kenya. This mm -hmm. is actually in the forest, um, the Mount mm -hmm. Kenya forest in Kirinyara County. Wow. Yeah, and uh, very, very beautiful, lovely of scenery course. there. Yeah. yeah, so it's, I was just hiking right there. Ah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> and uh, you know, it seems like you have a very interesting, diverse life. You're yes. into a lot of things. Yes. And um, I would also like to think that someone like you has a lot of friends. One of, yes, of course. One of my <laughs> hobbies. Let me because one you have something about you that just draws, <laughs> you know, like, because mm -hmm. then again, when you keep speaking positive words and you keep building people up, mm. it just automatically draws people to you. That's very true. Yeah. Very true. Mm. So, and actually, one of my hobbies is hiking. Okay. One of my hobbies is hiking, and one my, my goal is to be at the top of Africa by end of this year, and that will be Uhuru Peak at Kilimanjaro. You're trying it. Well, yeah. I have made it to the top of Mount Kenya. Oh, I have fantastic. actually made it to the top of Mount Kenya. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> it was that bad. You need a bigger challenge. You need a bigger challenge. Yes, yes. I do. Yes. I might need a bigger challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm. But for now, I'm just happy actually just talking to you, mm. getting to know the work that you do, mm. and going back to the life coach. Yes, the life coaching. Yes. Now I want us to talk to our youth directly. Mm -hmm. And as we end the segment, I'm going to ask you to share your social media handles because mm. what you're saying is some powerful stuff. Mm. And I know you've touched a few young souls mm. and they're going to reach out to you at some point. And before you share them, mm. Do you mind to give a word of encouragement mm. um, as a life coach? Yes, uh, <coughs> I'll say this now because uh, we are not on an entrepreneurship show. Number one, if you have a summer, you want to get into business or you're already into business, there are several things you need to ask yourself. Number one, okay. why are you in business? Why do you want to get into business? Yeah. That one you have to answer that. Because for me, the drive, I didn't know if I shared this with you, the drive was that I needed to do something purposeful. I wanted to live my life purpose. I wanted to do something that makes me happy and gives me fulfillment in life. And then from there, I look of how I can be able to earn from it. So why are you getting into business? And most people who are in employment, and by the way, if you go and speak to somebody, Mm. Anyway, even someone who is in employment, if they're not into business, they have a business idea. Yeah. If they're not moonlighting, they're, they're about to start. Yes, so <laughs> yeah, that's so true. They're about to start. About yeah, to so no, why are you getting into business? Most of the time people will say that, uh, you know, I have to be my own boss or to run away from my boss because he's like this and like that. There, there are all those reasons that you'll give. I want more time. But I those want are wrong more freedom. motives. Those are wrong motives. Because number one, there's a lot of pressure. You don't want entrepreneurship is pressure times 10. So what is, uh, why are you getting into business? Because if you're getting in it for the money, then you'll be out of that business in, in two years. Because any business as you're starting, it doesn't really, um, you know, it, will, it may not necessarily give you what you want. It can take so even it, a minimum of three years it or can two years. Yes, for it to really pick. Yeah. So if you're, in it, you're going in it for, to get more money, my friend, you have a problem. Mm. Two, if you're going because uh, you have a boss that gives you pressure, this is pressure, a lot of pressure in employment. Mm -hmm. And then also the other thing is that to be my own boss, you realize when you get out and you have clients that become your bosses, and now you have many bosses who have demands. So you, you have to meet all of those demands, so it is more demanding. Wow. So uh, make sure you're going to the business for the right reasons. You yeah. want to grow yourself, you want to develop, let that be very clear for yourself. It will give you focus. You will not, so that when you don't get into business, then two years you say, ah, this is not working. Which other one is working? Bitcoin. Uko mm apo, -hmm. unaruka. Mm -hmm. Haya, you, you don't get the money. You go to the other one. You don't. When you focus, you know what it is that you want and you focus. I am in this. For I'm in this business for one, two, three, mm. and I will do whatever it takes for me to grow this business. Mm -hmm. Then you find things starting to fall into place. So number one is the reason why. Then number two, it is action. You can we can speak here all day. Yeah, we can speak here all day. Most people are but very good talkers mm. and speakers, mm. but until you actually rubber meets road, you yes. go and register that company. 
that you know, you know you just because for the last five years I'm starting a business you've never registered a company mm. go and register a company mm -hmm. yes so action the difference between where you are today and where you want to be is simply action yeah and then and then now of course you have a vision for yourself because you can't achieve something you can't achieve a target you don't have you can't hit um, arrive to a destination that you don't have right. what is your vision for that business where do you see yourself in the next five years in the next ten years and that's yeah. a question many people are not able to answer even when you ask to need that is very true yes where do you see your business in the next five even years? Even if you shorten two yeah, years, even, even two, two years, years someone has years. no idea. Actually, even two years, even mm -hmm. do a roadmap. I, I usually encourage people in my academy and tell them, you know what, I want you to do a life plan. I want you to do a life plan. For the next five years, where do you see yourself? You write down. Uh, for the next, the other five years, like that until, put until when you want to live in this world. You can put up to a hundred or whatever. And you know what happens? God ca even can actually just look at your plan and your, your, your design. He says, you know, make your desires known unto me. And he actually gives you life up to those, up to all those years. That's so true. Yeah. So put your life plan. This is where I see myself in this. This is where I see myself. This is where I see myself at 80. This is where I see myself at 120. Put that. Mm -hmm. When you have that now, you'll be able to focus and you, you, you know, you even have a prayer point. You know, most time you go to pray, mm -hmm. and you don't even know what you're praying. You have a prayer point. Mm -hmm. so, Lord, I want to be this in the next five years. I want to build this for myself, for my country, for my continent, mm -hmm. for the world in the next 10 years. Wow. Let me tell you, you big dreams. Oh, my goodness. Big dreams. There's so much to learn. There's so much to learn, and I just wish we had more time. And I, I you know, um, I'd like for you to now share your social media handles. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like I should pick my phone right yeah. now. Because so, <laughs> believe you me, I am going to contact you at some point. Thank you. So kindly. Please share your so, social media yeah, handles. So, um, um, because, you know, we don't go online. We live online. You and live I'm online? online. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, on, on Facebook, I have a page, uh, Sarah Muni, the life coach. You'll just see my face. Sarah yes. Muni, the life coach. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, you can like my page. And then you, on YouTube, I'm very vocal on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, Sarah Muni. Uh -huh. Again, you'll just see my videos yes, there. Yes, I have watched some of your... Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. And then there's uh, Twitter at Sarah Muni, IG at um, Sarah Muni as well, IG Sarah Muni. And then uh, my WhatsApp, can I say my WhatsApp? If you like. My, yes, my WhatsApp if is... If you like. Yes, my yeah. WhatsApp is 0723557048. Yes, and let's continue with this conversation. Let's continue empowering each other. Yes. Please repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> the number. Yes, the, 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 my WhatsApp is 0723557048. Okay. That's my WhatsApp number, yeah. Right, yeah, so it. please feel free to contact me. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll be very happy to, to engage and to just empower each other. Wow. That's the least you can do for anybody. Yeah. yeah. Wow, this is just amazing. You guys, you've heard on how you can find Miss Mooney. She's a wonderful lady, and trust me, if you're looking for some kind of direction, this is the one to go to. And if you've got some kind of a dream on some kind of a skill, you know, I'd love for you guys to reach out to Miss Sarah Mooney. She's really, really amazing. And not only is she a serial entrepreneur, she's actually a life coach. That means that's somebody who actually guides you as you go through life. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Why in the Morning. Hilda is coming up next with another interview. My name is Joy Mochache. I have been so, 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 so blessed to have you here on set. Thank Asante you. Sana. Thank you so much. Yes. Where you can invite me again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, yeah, we look into thank that. Thank you. Uh. Yeah. Mm.